Yes, uh, we will actually start for opening statements first with Tiffany Christiansen. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Tiffany. I am a mom of four kids, and I have two darling grandkids. My husband, Sean, and I have lived here for about 19 years. I am the Vice President of Marketing at Levitt Group. I sit on the board of Canyon Creek Services, and I'm a member of the Utah Marriage Commission. And I love the youth of our community. I have devoted, I don't even know how many hours to our club soccer program uh, to, in schools and in my church. And I really believe that education is the greatest investment we'll ever make in Iron County. And my top priority, if you remember nothing tonight, is that I will support our teachers. They make all the difference. And I want them to find joy in teaching again. Also, I'm a bridge builder. I'm going to seek perspectives from everyone, just like Evan said. And my goal is to make decisions that are student center, and I'm gonna keep far away from far right politics or far left politics, and focus on our students and their futures. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Billy Davis. Thank you. Uh, my name is Billy Davis. My, wife, my lovely wife, Jennifer, and I have five children, all of whom have been raised here in Cedar City. Our youngest two daughters are attending Cedar High. One is a, well, will be a sophomore and one is, that will be a senior. My wife Jennifer and I work together as realtors managing a very successful real estate team. We care greatly about Iron County Schools and the future of our children. Besides my busy life in real estate, I've spent time volunteering through the years in scouting, coaching, and sitting on the board of Cedar American Little League. Since deciding to run for school board, I've also spent time as a substitute teacher trying to gain some insight into our schools. As a concerned parent, I will work to ensure that our schools focus on academics, put parents back in the driver's seat, and give teachers the support that they need. I am committed to putting our students first, standing up for Utah values, and keeping radical policies out of our classrooms and libraries. Thank, Thank you. you. Now we'll have Steve Merrill. Thank you. Good evening. My name's Steve Merrill. I am really sorry, I really wanted to be there in person tonight, but uh, I'm a software development manager and my company sent me to implement a, a significant system for a customer in Ohio, so um, I'm stuck on the east end of the country right now. Uh, I'm married to a former teacher. Uh, we have three kids currently in the Iron School System, one at Cedar High, one at Cedar Middle, and one at Iron Springs Elementary. Um, to me, the school board needs to exist to implement policies to make decisions that are best for the students. Um, after that, the board needs to exist to implement policies and make decisions that are best for teachers and the administrators so that they can, in turn, provide the best learning environment for the students. The school board should be a safety net for the schools. It, it needs to take the brunt of the frustrations from various factions within the community that may be at odds with others within the community address those frustrations and allow the administrators, teachers, and students to excel without having the distraction of anyone's current specific focus. Thank you. All right, for our first question, we, have, we had it submitted to us via Facebook. As a school board member, how will you address the growing problem of significant declining mental health in our students? Mr. Merrill, we'll hear from you, hear from you first. Mental health, in general, like I say, I'm a software development manager. I'm not a mental health professional. Um, we are blessed to have mental health professionals in the schools and, and a community of mental health professionals that want to support the schools. So I think the best way to address it within the schools is to work with our professionals to find out from them what they're seeing, what they're hearing, and what they want to have done. And then, as the board, find a way to implement that within the, the budgetary restrictions we have, the personnel restrictions we may have, and, uh, and do whatever we can to help the kids and make sure that when they graduate high school, that they are ready for a world that can be a whole lot harder than a high school in a rural county. All right, thank you. Next, we'll hear from Ms. Christiansen. Thank you. Um, I heard this term the other day, uh, the United States of anxiety. And I thought to myself, how, 
we, the, our kids are growing up in a completely different world than I did in the 80s, and that mental health has to be addressed in the schools. Uh, my friend Stephanie Ward, I was talking to her, she's the director of uh, the Children's Justice Center, she said you can either take care of it now, or you can pay for it later. We can either put a guardrail at the top or an ambulance at the bottom. Mental health is so important in, in order for learning to take place. And uh, I've always been a proponent of educating the whole child. Academics, social, emotional learning is critical. And Iron County is coming up with a great program that we can um, develop our children as a whole person. And it's wonderful, we have Iron Stories, we have other things coming in, but it's so critical that we have a program in place so that kids can have their mental health needs taken care of. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Thank you. Uh, you know, this is definitely a huge concern from what I'm hearing back from teachers and principals throughout the, the area. And it's a tough one to address because, you know, honestly, this is something that the majority of should be taken care of at home. The family needs to be taken care of, of these problems. And I, and I understand that there are broken families. I understand that there are issues at home and, and that unfortunately the schools are left to pick up the pieces with these situations. I, I, I honestly don't have a great answer for this, but I know that we need to be able to do what we're supposed to do at school, which is teach academics. We need to have these kids being able to succeed at that and move on with their lives. And we can't have these issues getting in the way of that. And so to address the problem of mental health, I, I honestly don't know. I would like to encourage parents to get involved through the school board and hopefully come up with solutions outside of the schools if possible. Thank you. Our next question oh, goes as follows. Oh, did, we... oh, did he, already, he already answer? Yeah. Um, who is responsible for protecting our children in Iron County schools when it comes to gun violence? And we'll start with Mr. Davis. Well, this is definitely uh, a school district issue. We, we need to be protecting the kids. They are our most valuable resource. Um, I, I know that no more needs to be done, and this is very apparent based on what we've seen in the news these last few weeks. I think that... Um, it's definitely necessary to consider having teachers being armed. I understand that there are those who do, who do not want to be armed. They don't want that responsibility. I think that we need to consider options like non-lethal methods of uh, protection, which might include pepper spray, you know, available to each teacher, staff, whatever. Uh, we, need to, we need to spend more money on our schools. We need to secure the schools. I know that spending money is not always a popular thing to do, but when it comes to our kids, we have to go back and look at that. We've got to spend some more money on our schools and protect them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Merrill. So the question of who's responsible for protecting our students is a, is a challenging one. Um, as much as is possible, the schools are, but the, the cause goes so far beyond the schools that I think we need to look earlier in the process. You know, some simple things like making it so that there's only one unlocked door and that door filters directly into an office are simple safety measures that we can add to help protect our students. But the previous question with the focus on mental health, I think that's a much bigger piece to protecting our students since the majority of these school shootings are former students coming in to hurt people who they felt they were hurt by. So um, I, I think the responsibility falls on, to some large extent, us, but five years earlier than an incident happens. Thank you. Ms. Christiansen. Well, we definitely can't just roll the dice and hope that it will never happen here, especially, I, I do not want to become the next Uvalde. And I went and talked to a lot of parents and teachers after this. I said, what can we do right now at a local level to help keep us um, safe? And it was interesting. Teachers had, I had lots of different ideas, but one was put a gun safe in the, in the uh, schools where they can see that we're going to protect each other. One teacher said, please don't arm teachers. Um, you know, they joked, they said, you don't trust us with curriculum, but you trust us with a gun. And, um, but they said, you know, 
we need to work together with our law enforcement. And one gentleman said, hey, I could come and volunteer and be secure or security. So there's lots of issues. But one thing that was universal, most people I talked to, was mental health is needs to be an, addressed and it needs to be taught. And um, that is something that everyone agreed on was a big issue in um, solving this problem. But who really is responsible for it? We all are. All right, thank you. On to our next question. Increasing unity on the school board is a component in some of your campaigns. How would you unify the school board? We'll start with Ms. Chris Jansen. I, I come from business leadership, and I know that in order to make a team work, you have to look at all perspectives. And as Evan said, my favorite Stephen Covey is you have to first seek to understand and then be understood. I'm a bridge builder, and I'm going to look at all those perspectives because if you don't, then you can't really move forward as a team. It's so important to reach across the table and Un try to understand how is this person feeling rather than come in with some political agenda or just already think you know what's going on because you don't. And especially with all the growth we're experiencing, there's gonna be some really serious issues that are gonna uh, um, come to the board and you've gotta be able to talk about the elephant in the room, tackle hard issues. You've got to be able to um, say, okay, what is the most important thing with children as the focus that we have to have that we have to make happen. And if you keep your priorities right and you have your mission um, and we have a shared goals, we can be a, become a performing board and support the district. Thank you. Mr. Davis, your response. Thank you. Uh, I too work in business leadership and I work in negotiations. Um, the biggest thing that I do in negotiations is I diffuse bad situations. I try to take the emotion out of them and I try to get everybody to look at look at a situation from different perspectives if need be. And I too see the situation from different perspectives. Um, there's no doubt that I'm qualified to work with other members of the school board and, and build unity among them. And, uh, and I, I believe that my experience as a manager working in management for a lot of my life would, would aid in that as well. Thank you. Mr. Merrill, your response? Um, probably a little bit different. Uh, the best leadership I have ever seen was with the company I'm with right now. There was a, a time where my boss and I disagreed on something and we ended up in a shouting match uh, for about five or 10 minutes. And at the end of it, uh, when I found out I was wrong, uh, we ended up talking through it and I said, I'm, I'm sorry, that was very unprofessional. And his response to me was, you were fighting for the client and to do what's absolutely best. You might be wrong, but it was important that you fight. And I think that the best thing that we could do for Unity is to make sure that everyone on the school board is fighting for the students, for the kids. And if we disagree on things, we need to be allowed to say everything we need to say and get it off our chests and hear the other people talk and if that means that there's a shouting match, there's a shout, shouting match. But as long as we're focused on the kids, we're going to get where we need to be. And we're going to be pretty unified, just like a family arguing over Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you. In the 2022, oh, this question's from Facebook, by the way. In the 2022 Utah legislative session, HB 234 was a bill that would require public school teachers to post all learning materials and syllabi for each day of instruction for parents to review. The bill was ultimately pulled and did not move forward. Do you support this type of bill? Why or why not? Mr. Merrill, you'll be first. Uh, no, I don't. The concept of it I love. Um, putting out the, the expected direction of the course for, for the semester or for the year um, I think is perfectly reasonable. And I would expect at the beginning of a semester that syllabi are passed out for the kids, and it's not unreasonable to have that available to the parents a little early. But it's difficult for teachers who haven't had these students yet to lock in ahead of time how they're going to teach them. Because teachers adapt to the classes they have. Every classroom has a different personality, and they adapt to the events that happen. Um, you know, after this Rob Elementary thing, if there had been school for a few days afterward, they needed to not be locked into something from six months ago when there hadn't been a shooting right then. 
Um, I think that being open is important, but demanding that they get locked into anything six months ahead, and if parents haven't been able to review it, they can't adapt, is unreasonable. Thank you. Ms. Christiansen. Um, from the outset, like Steve just said, it does seem like this would be a good bill because I'm a parent and I want to be involved in my kids' school. However, it sends a completely wrong message to the teachers. And as I said before, I 100% support great teaching because you get great teachers in the schools, you get great um, education. And we have to trust our teachers and not micromanage them. The best way to take the joy out of teaching is to micromanage our teachers. They've been spending years developing curriculum, um, state standards, and they teach to those standards. And it's, it's critical that we put the joy back into teaching. We're losing so many teachers. Uh, we have so many students that don't even want to go into the profession because it's overregulated. Um, they're underpaid. And that's a good way to drive teachers out of our Iron County is to tell them, yeah, we're going to micromanage you in curriculum as well. Thank you. Mr. Davis. You know, I, I would have to agree with Mr. Merrill. I think the concept is great. I do think that it is, like Ms. Christiansen said, it is overburdening the teachers. I. Day by day, I think that's a little much. I think the curriculum should be available to the parents uh, any time that they request it. I think they should know what's being taught by the teacher uh, to you know whatever extent they can know. But to require it that to that extreme, I think is too much. All right, thank you. We're going to head into the closing statement portion of our debate tonight. First, we'll hear from Ms. Christiansen. So if we want quality education for our kids and to help them be ready for the real world, we must retain and attract great teachers. They're overregulated, they're, they work long hours, they're poorly paid, and it's critical to create a culture of support and trust. And we must treat them like the licensed professionals that they are. And when parents and teachers and students come together as a team, magic happens. And I'm going to listen to all perspectives. Um, and with so many important issues, such as growth and bonding and every kind of all the difficult things the board is facing right now, uh, public input is critical. So I'm going to get busy solving real issues. And I'm not going to focus on far right wing or far left wing politics. We don't need toxic politics on the school board. We need to focus on students. So above all, I will focus on our students and what's best for them and their futures. Thank you, Mr. Davis. I believe that parents know what is best for their children, not the federal government and not the institutions seeking to indoctrinate our children with their ideologies. I believe that our teachers have the talent, skills, and love for teaching to do just that, which is to teach. As a school board, we need to work to resolve the issues and problems that teachers face in the classroom so that they can do what they, they've been trained to do. I believe that we live in what is still the greatest country on earth, but to continue to be that, we need to lead in academics, which currently we do not. More specifically, Utah is not a leader in academics, and this should be our focus. We need to get rid of the noise and hone in on creating an atmosphere and curriculum that sets our children up for success. I believe we can accomplish these things with the values we held dear in our community. We need to work together with teachers and parents to give our children the best environment and education possible. I am Billy Davis, and my contact our information is available at votebillydavis.com. I welcome your questions, comments, and your support. Thank you. Mr. Merrill? Thank you. I want to say I really appreciate the, uh, the efforts put forth to allow me to get on through Zoom. Um, I, had, I had so badly wanted to be there, and I was so disappointed I couldn't, and I, I really appreciate the chance to still get on. Uh, because in a, a previous day, debate that I had with Mr. Davis, I forgot to get my contact info out. I want to make sure I do that now before I forget again. Uh, if you want to know more about me or contact me, a website, steve for icsd at webflow.io, has my positions on a bunch of policies and a contact me form. Um, as both of the other candidates said, I think we need to be focused on making sure that teachers are able to teach. I think that it's critical that the 
the students are the focus and the teachers are given the opportunity to work with the administration and with the school board to develop the best way to reach their students because that's how we're going to keep and develop and hold on to the greatest teachers and be the best schools district we can be. All right, thank you. Let's give school board seat five candidates a round of applause.